there's a new balance coming out for the new year and uh, yeah it's pretty crazy so let me a very casual player <laughs> uh, talk about this ban list first of all Agiro and Kelbeck the Shizu millers I think this really killed the Tillman decks because they could both like mill a lot of cards from either your deck or your opponent's deck I completely understand the ban they were way too overpowered although they are a very fun uh, way to mill cards uh, if you're playing like a gimmicky deck which uh, I usually did with them up next we have Matt Mix Circular that is banned. Well, the cyber strategy just took a big hit. To be honest, this card is very good. Like you can special summon it very easily and then you can add any Matt Mix spell and trap card from your deck to your hand. It was previously limited, but I guess it was still too good to uh, to exist in the game. All I know is that he avoided the ban list in Master Duel. They instead opted to limit another Matt Mix card. After that, we have Isolde, Two Tales of the Noble Knights. This continues the trends of uh, powerful Link 2s. But yeah, I know this card was way too abusable and it was splashed in in other decks other than the Noble Knights, so I guess it deserved the ban hammer. And I think the Exodia deck by Jeff Leonard that was uh, recently featured in a big Yu-Gi-Oh! event cements the fact that this card is way too powerful. But yeah, please Konami, stop making Link 2s that break the game and we should be fine. And I guess that's it for the banned cards. Overall, lots of big hits to be honest. I think the fact that the Shizu Millers are gone cements the fact that it's gonna be a new era they're gonna push some new other cards so they want to get rid of the good ones right now so now to limited cards first we have orcas harp horror i know a lot of people was waiting for this card to be unbanned and honestly i feel like at one it shouldn't really cause a problem with today's meta game this card is totally fine i don't think anyone is gonna play orcas anyway you know then we have redux dragon ruler of boulders another dragon ruler getting unbanned no surprise there to be honest it's another card i feel got uh, pretty much power creep and should be fine with today's metagame. So the only Dragon Ruler that's left on the Forbidden list is Tidal, which from my understanding is one of the more powerful ones. Then we have Rescue Ace Airlifter. I'm not that familiar with this deck, so I don't know how much it can affect it. From his effect, what I'm understanding is that it's a pretty important searcher for any spell card in your deck. Seems like a centerpiece of the strategy. But yeah, not a lot I can say about this since I'm not that familiar with the deck and the strategy. What I know though is that they set a lot of spell and trap cards, and this hit pretty much uh, limits their consistency. Up next, Unchained Soul of Shavara. From what I saw, it seems like Unchained is having a lot of success and obviously if, uh, if a deck is too successful, they're gonna want to limit their consistency or their combo pieces. Sharvara seems to uh, pretty much enable a lot of combos with Unchained since it does destroy either a Fiend or a phase down card you control, which pretty much gets the deck going. Up next we have Sun Avalon, Dryas and Sunvine Healer. I think it's very surprising that they hit this deck. It did have some level of success from what I've seen. I think there's just a small part of people that, that are using this deck um, and they're having success with it. I guess if they're hitting some decks they want to hit some that might be potentially too good. Very surprising hit but uh, interesting nonetheless. Next we have If the World Chalice Justice here. Justice Yar? I don't know, but they've unbanned this card and I can see why they banned it in the first place because well, it's a searcher for its own archetype and it does float into something else when it hits the graveyard which is pretty easy to do if you're linking off but uh, I guess it's nice to have more uh, world chalice but then again I don't know who's gonna play world chalice in this day and age unless I'm not aware of some stupid combos with this the next one's a big one snatch steel <laughs> all yugi boomers rejoice snatch steel is coming back I know they've unbanned it before and it caused a lot of problems so let's see what kind of shenanigans it can cause now Although I honestly think it won't really affect the game that much since there are a lot of cards that already steal your opponent's monster. The difference with Snatch Steel is that it does keep them on your field. Your opponent doesn't get it back. But in the end, I think it'll just be like a change of heart where you use it and then you link off with something else. You're just using your opponent's monsters for your materials. But anyway, great to see another old school card coming back. Next we have Gozen Match, Rivalry of Warlords, and there can only be one. I never thought they would hit so many floodgates so hard. I know a lot of people hate them, they can be very annoying to play against, or with, because of some weird rulings with these cards. 
But they did give uh, some rogue decks more uh, space to play, you know, which is a shame, but uh, I guess we'll just have to live with it. But yeah, I think this is, no, this is pretty great, to be honest. I think if they still want to keep uh, floodgates in the game, they should all be at least 2-1. Some exceptions would be like in archetype floodgates, where it's more limited to the archetype you're playing with. But this might be um, another discussion for another day. Nonetheless, very excited to see where this leads to. Next, we have the shortest lists in the battle list the semi limited so we have dino wrestler pancratops who went from limited to semi limited a lot of people say that fenrir power crept this card but i can still see some people implement this card in their decks since it is pretty useful and uh, very versatile then we have speed roid teratop it should be fine at two i don't see i don't think a lot of people would play this card right now unless you want to fast rank three um I don't see any decks really using it. After that, we have Pearly Sleepy Memory and uh, can't say much. My only experience with uh, Pearly is pretty much from Master Duel, but I know this card is very annoying to be honest and lets, it lets them draw so many cards. But yeah, a little hit to uh, consistency, but it's semi-limited so I don't see it affect the deck that much to be honest. Then we go to my favorite place, the Unlimited. What is unlimited? So we have Infernity Archfiend, which, uh, yeah, fair. Like, in Infernities aren't going to be uh, dominant unless someone finds some, like, really cool combo with this. But with their spell card at limited, I don't think it's gonna happen. It's another one of those power crep cards that are unlimited, getting unlimited. Then we have Kashura Unicorn, who was semi limited, now back to unlimited. And uh, that's pretty weird. That's just, it just seemed like a useless hit if you're gonna unlimit it right after it was semi limited limited in any case it was pretty much a rise hard the the big big problem that card was so powerful it was too op next we have mind control all right another card that steals monsters looks like they're unbanning every card that like gets your opponent's monsters i guess they they're no longer a threat so it's not an issue there we have unlimited pot of desires which was semi-limited before and uh sure i can't wait to activate this then draw two other part of desires i used to miss that feeling then we have spellbook of judgment which was limited and uh i don't think any deck was using it even when it was limited but it might be interesting to see what it can do if it's unlimited in some certain decks people people can get creative then we have a uh, sprite starter which was semi-limited and yeah i don't see that causing a problem all the cards that are semi-limited and back to unlimited is like there's there's basically almost no change. What are the chances that you're gonna use all three cards in your game? Although I know it's all about like consistency in your deck and having the having it in your starter hand and all that, but still. And finally, we have Upstart Gobbling. So in exchange of uh, 3,000 life points, uh, you have a 37 deck, which is uh, is pretty nice, I guess, for some people. It should be fine if you can kill your opponent with 11,000 life points. I know there's some implications with the Upstart Gobbling having uh, being a free spell card to use, but I don't see how this will affect the meta game too much. But we'll we'll see. We'll see in the future. So all in all, this ban list is crazy to be honest. There's so many cards that were hit, unlimited. This is the type of ban list that can change a lot in the game. And I, for one, am for it. If every time ban lists were this big, I'd be way more invested in the competitive game. So let me know your thoughts on this. What are your favorite hits? What are your least favorite hits? Or like, do you think other things should have been hit? Please complain in the comments down below. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and see you next time.